Hello everybody, welcome back. This is a follow-up on my latest video, How I Make Oracle Decks Work For Me. As you know, I am very tarot-brained, but today I am talking about the wonderful Living Altar Oracle. So this one is about fixing little mistakes, or as I call it, hacking this deck, the Living Altar Oracle, and maybe this then for you uh, gives you helpful tips to do that with another deck, or this very same deck of course. Maybe for you um, this will fix some issues in other decks that you have that present similar issues. So uh, this is by no means a bashing of this deck. I love this beauty, but there are a few mistakes in the book which I will get to, and even a few on the cards, I will also point those out. So I thought I would take you through my process today, and it's definitely a work in progress, so keep that in mind. Let's get into it. Okay, so first of all, this deck has the wonderful Witch's Wheel set up. The idea and the structure is great. I tweaked it, though. <laughs> uh, we're going to go through it, but I want to start with going through the courts. At least those are what I call the courts. These are the elemental cards. So there are different sections in this deck. And right now, let's get to the elemental cards, meaning not the four element cards plus the fifth element of, you could say, spirit or source, but the elemental cards, meaning basically there are four suits, as in air, fire, water, and earth, and then there are four cards within each suit. So it's very much like tarot, and there is like, for instance, the watery part of air, and then the fiery part of earth, all of those things, right? So it's very similar. Um, first of all, let's go through where we see the element on the card, because beautiful cards. We are starting with inspiration, and this, here we can see this big red triangle. This is the alchemical symbol for air, and within that triangle, we have a smaller one, which would mean the uh, air of air. So here we have the second card, intention, and I don't know if you can tell very well, but we still have that element of air, the big one, and within we can tell a little bit uh, easier here is a inverted triangle, and that is, or with the point pointed downwards, that would be water of air. So corresponding to the queen of swords, right? Uh, normally. So at first I thought that the quartz sequence went along with the Toth system, uh, meaning in the Toth with the quartz we have the knight which is fire, then the queen which is water, the prince he is air, and then the princess is earth. But that is not the sequence that we are talking about here. Uh, I will explain why I thought this, why I made this mistake, but it's uh, a system that I know a little bit longer. It's Redwood, Smith, Marseille, and many, many other systems as well. We are starting with the kings. I read the kings as air. So we have first air for the kings, then water for the queens, then fire for the knights, and finally the pages for earth. So that is the sequence that we are working with if you, like me, choose to read these elemental cards in a court kind of way. Now, for me, actually, it's kind of backwards because I read the tarot court cards pretty much elementally, uh, and now having this, it's like an extra layer. I mean, I guess I could think of the King of Swords as inspiration, but definitely not only that, but it's, you know, it's bringing a deeper layer, which I enjoy very much. Now, the reason why it was a bit of a puzzle for me is because in the book, this is the guidebook that you get with the deck, um, they go through, <laughs> let me try to explain this. Um, first of all, in the book, there is a page for every card, right? So it's not really in sequence, if you will. The sequence is much more clear in the witch's wheel that I showed here. But um, the suit 
starts with the corresponding court, meaning, for instance, talking about the suit of water, then in the book they start off with the water card, the water part of water elemental card, and then in the earth element they start with the earth. So you see how we still have the sequence of air, fire, water, earth, which is actually really working out, working out for me because as you may know, I like to, that is how I like to read my, um, make my elemental spread, tarot spread, how I do the elemental checkup kind of thing, check-in. So I have the, I start with air and then next to it I put fire, so it's kind of like the active um, elements on top above and then uh, below that I make a little square below the fire element I have then the um, what's the word the opposite element you could say of water and then underneath the air I have the opposite element of earth and then that makes below we have the receptive low below elements so that is how I like to do that do that little sequence and it's nothing new you know we say often earth, air, fire, water, but then it's the same sequence, like, right? Air, fire, water, earth. So, uh, no, am I saying, yes, I said that correctly. This is gonna, hopefully, not going to be too confusing, but um, then in the book, just to explain it even more clearly, uh, talking about these elemental cards, they would go, for instance, starting with the suit of water, looking at the suit of water, the first card would then be the queen. So they would go water and then, you know, continue this sequence. Water, then earth, then air, then fire. But you know what? It's, it makes sense, I guess, energetically, you could say, um, to start with the strongest card of the suit. That is at least how I see it, right? But it's really confusing to me because every suit kind of seems to be out of order in this way. And it's difficult to find in the book, just practically, right? Also, everywhere else in the deck, all the, sequen go, all the sequins go um, air, fire, water, earth, right? And in the wheel as well. So that is basically, yeah, how I make sense of this. So it just seems that the order of the cards was altered in the text only. So I am going to take care of that and to have them all in a, you know, similar court system, I'd say. Now, with these cards, we come across the first mistakes that are in the book. So, um, there are perhaps more mistakes. If you have found those, let me know. But here are the ones that I found um, that you can look out for. Let's see. The element of air. So, with air, we start with air of air, inspiration. And here it says guiding messages. Oops, guiding messages on the, um, yeah, on the end of this, this page. So, what does air of air hold for you at this time? That's correct, right? Then we have creativity. This is fire of air. Intention is water of air. But then here with the choice card, it still says water of air, even though it's very clearly supposed to be earth of air. Also, when looking at the alchemical symbol on the card, it's clearly a triangle with a line meaning earth, right? So um, I've checked this twice and let's go through the other ones. Then we go to the fire suit, which is right after here. We have transformation, fire of fire. See, it starts with the fire then. Cleansing, water of fire. Ritual, earth of fire. And then creation, it says earth of fire, but that is supposed to be air of fire, okay? Then we go to the water cards. I think it's just, um, I, I mean, I, I guess the book could have been, you know, checked a little bit better, but I really don't mind. I just want to bring in this information just so that you, you know, maybe put a little sticker over the word or something like that uh, so that you know uh, what card you're looking at. You know, if you don't pay attention and just read the text, 
then you might have a different energy in mind than the card you actually pulled, right? Which is sad. <laughs> so um, expression, water of water, council, earth of water, ancestor, air of water, and then initiate initiation, it says air of water, but it's supposed to be fire of water. All right, so those are the little mistakes that I found in the book. And let's see, what else is there? Um, you know, I find, I find the book just a little bit difficult to understand. Um, I gush over some passages sometimes, but other times it's just not giving me what I was hoping for, basically. Um, sometimes you just want to read a text that explains what's on the card and why or you know what we get here is is um correspondences within the witch's wheel which can be helpful then a long spell which is sometimes a little unclear for me <laughs> uh, but you know fun and it's not a spell as in take this candle you know uh, light this incense uh, use this herb no but it's it's more like this uh, I guess, inspiring text, which can be very nice. But, you know, sometimes we need a little bit more of that practical element. But I guess they left the practical up to us, you know? Um, but then we have the guiding messages, which is very short. And, yeah, for instance, here with the death card, we get, remain true to the spirit of hope that called to you from the deep. Honor the catalyst of your journey. Dissolve, let go, return it all to source. Yeah, I guess that is... Uh, poetically practical. But as I said, other times it's just not really getting me what I was hoping for, and that might be just me, but I'm just sharing this whole process with you. Now, um, getting a better idea of the sections in the deck definitely helps my interpretation of each and every card, because it doesn't just come out of thin air, uh, almost. Looking at the cards and, and, you know, applying the word it becomes a system in my head. So um, that was great, this little video right here. It's really hard to think in a circle. The witch's wheel is really cool, but the order the cards are presented in, in the book, is not super working out for me. Uh, that's one of the reasons I'm making my own book for this deck. Now, I'm not quite that far yet, but as I said, I'm just bringing you along. So, in the next section are some quite different looking cards, the spell cards in the deck. Those are kind of repeat cards. So here we have um, the day card, which would, I like to correspond that to the midday uh, card, which is when the sun is at its peak. So. Then we have, for instance, the moon card, which would be the full moon, right? But then also we have here, rebirth. Is that the right, right way up? No, I'm holding them upside down. Sorry about that. So once more, the day card, the moon card, <laughs> and then here is rebirth. I, th I thought so. Okay, so rebirth... Um, I will show you very clearly, that's the name of this card, I remember that now, but we already have a rebirth card in this deck. The difference here is that this one is the rebirth spell card. So um, these ones will be used, I shuffled them right back in the deck um, after hearing this great um, yeah, idea, suggestion. When these um, these types of cards are pulled, they are for more active spell work. I think that's a great idea. So yeah, they are going back in the deck. But not all alchemical symbols for the elements seem to align with their original cards in the deck. So what do I mean by that? Here we, we see, yes, we see rebirth. Here uh, is the alchemical symbol for air and rebirth definitely spell card also has air so that aligns that is very great so let me explain this better we have rebirth and childhood they are air then we have adolescence next to young adults 
which seems to be water here, right? But I have a feeling it's supposed to be fire together with young adult, together with adolescence. Because after that, we get to the adult stage. These are the life path cards, which is very clearly water with midlife, also water. And then we get to elderhood. There in the corner, bottom corner is earth element and here death also between the eyes, the earth elements. So did you see the mistake there? The adolescence card looks very fiery, yet the young adult card looks like water. And I am pretty sure that this mistake was transmitted to the spell cards that go along with it because here we have spell card um, adolescence, fire, but here we have the spell card for young adults and it looks very watery again, whereas it would be strange, right, to have two cards for each element, but then just with one element we have one card and with another one we have three elements, something went wrong there. And that also um, something to look out for, right? I know this is getting very technical, technical, I hope it's not too boring, but it's worth a mention if you have this deck, because see, there are also um, these topical or life path cards all have a sibling card, which are uh, topics that you can contemplate next to them. And you see they are pretty much supposed to be, I believe, the same element. Here we have fire and fire. And um, we can see that with the young adult card, which in sequence, right, going from adolescent to young adult to adult, that makes sense. Um, in sequence, these are also supposed to be fire, but we can see that this red thread is actually giving the impression that it's the element of water, whereas I don't believe it is so. Okay, I think the last little thing that I noticed in the book that isn't exactly the way that it's supposed to be is for the spell cards, they printed out or they printed these. The book is black and white, by the way. They just printed out their, um, you know, what the cards look like. Here, though, with the last spell cards, which are... Um, repeat cards of earth, air, fire, and water. Here with the air, it does not look like the air elemental card that we have in the spell card. It's very similar with those um, butterfly wings. Actually, what they printed here is the card backs which looks very much like <laughs> like the air card. So um, just in case you get confused by that, I noticed that, right? Um, not a huge mistake, but um, yeah, just something to, to know to, to, yeah. So with all of those elements and with all of those uh, well, images really, this beautiful artwork, I want to make sure to make that really clear in my own little book so that it's easy to find and easy to see, hold on, which element is young adult again, and I can just go look it up and know, okay, so it looks like water, but actually it's fire, right? <laughs> so um, I can live with that. That's all fine. But here we go, looking at this little book again. Having all of this black and white and the wheel that I showed in the beginning not illustrated, um, it doesn't help defining the cards. It's a little bit hard to define the cards. Basically, with this booklet, I manage, but I want my booklets to have more photos in sequence, in color, so that you can easily recognize the cards also where they are in the witch's wheel. 
um, photos of the life path cards with their sibling and then the spell cards along with their original card um, you know as in this moon card and it's next to the full moon so I can recognize this is the moon card even though there is no word printed on here um, so basically more photos all together and more colors all together not just for the pretty pictures but for structure so I can make sense of it in my head all right here comes finally my hack for this deck because it's about the moon phases in my original Witch's Wheel uh, video, I did not know the deck yet. I didn't know what I was looking at, really. And I couldn't figure out why the phases were all opposite. At least that's how they seemed to me. Now, the comment section came to the rescue. They said, well, this is what they appear as in the sky in the Southern Hemisphere. <laughs> of course, I am in the Northern Hemisphere, and the moon, I say that I feel that oops the moon phase is kind of like the light at least I feel it opens and then closes like a book that's always how I see this moon um, yeah appear in the sky and change in the sky and even when drawing the moon cycle I like to draw it from right to left so that I'm yeah so that it makes sense for me so basically for me um, most of the moon cards, they are, um, here they are, beautiful. Um, most of these cards, they feel like they are named incorrectly or depicted backwards. Like some really clear, um, yeah, no, that's not that clear. A clear example, third quarter moon, to me, if this is supposed to be third quarter, it's supposed to be just backwards, the other way around, right? Here is my fix, <laughs> or rather a hack. I flip them around. I flip them around and use them upside down in the deck. From now on, this is how I will shuffle them in the deck. It's kind of cool looking, actually, I think, right? Because it's kind of like looking at the moon, looking up to the sky and it works out great because the lunar cycle now for me <laughs> I'm doing a great job at showing this the lunar cycle now for me it makes sense I will insert pictures to make it more clear so the lunar cycle for me it makes sense and the words on the card make sense as well, meaning uh, the actual meaning of the card, the intended meaning of the very card when I pull it, you know? I don't have to do this weird math feeling translating of the opposite moon cycle, you know, in my head, and then am I actually reading the gibbous moon or the disseminating moon. No, when I pull the disseminating moon card, I know what it's supposed to be and it feels the right way around. <laughs> I know that the backs are non-reversible, but you know, I will just have to shuffle without looking or without paying too much attention to it and I'm sure that I can manage that. So uh, let's take a look at all of this by stepping into the wheel once more. Okay, so here we are in the wheel, starting at Surrender, the Source card, and here we have the first circle with the elements and the seasons. We have Earth, which is very dark, Air, Fire, and Water. Then Winter, that goes along with Earth, Spring, that goes with Air, Summer with Fire, and Autumn with Water, which is exactly how I use the elements and the seasons together. Here we have the sun cards. I started showing you midnight, then sunrise, and then with fire is midday, the most amount of sun. Water, we have the sunset. Moving over to the moon cards, 
Can you see that I have all flipped them over just so that um, the cycle kind of makes sense with um, how I made the Northern Hemisphere Moon cycle work? Next to the full sun on the midday card, we now also have the full moon reflecting the full light of the full sun. <laughs> All right, moving on to the life path cards. Here we have rebirth. All of those life path cards, they have sibling, which are topical cards. Rebirth has as a sibling card emergence. And you will see that I have flipped the topical cards upside down, just like the moon phases. And this is because I figured Having them right way up, they both follow the same color gradient. Whereas if I flip the topical card the other way around, we actually do get a gradient with all the cards, with the, all the sibling cards between the life path cards and the topical cards. At least it doesn't always work, but most of the time I have a feeling I cracked this code. And I really like it. I really wanted to make this gradient work. It doesn't exactly fit, but well enough for me. I had fun doing this. Okay, let's look at the elemental cards. There are four of each element. Oh, back up a little bit. I see that I've made a mistake in filming this. It's actually supposed to go inspiration, intention, then creativity, then choice. Okay, let's keep going. So here we have the biggest mystery of this deck for me. I finally cracked the code, which really wasn't that hard to crack, but in the wheel, this is how they are laid out, and this is also how I see them in a court card system. Last suit over here, we have Earth, starting with a beautiful butterfly, I think flying over a forest, which is Earth. So, air of Earth, identity. I'm not putting in the spell cards at this point. It's a pretty thing to look at, isn't it? We have this whole side of the wheel that is dark and then lightens up slowly on one side through blue, on the other side through pink, and then the beautiful fire corner, you could say. I like that the gradient worked out a little bit. I think, apart from the mistake, at least now with this second time making the witch's wheel, I knew what I was looking at and I knew what I was working with much more than the first time that I made the witch's wheel. So this is why I needed to make it again, also again to take pictures to put in the book that I'm making for this deck, to make sense of this deck, to know this deck, to know the cards a little bit better so that I can read them a little bit better. All this work that I'm putting in is because I want to make sure it gets used as much as possible. I hope that was fun for you. What I will do here, apart from making the structure, 
clearer for myself and adding colored pictures is leave room for me to write my own meaning and my own findings. What do I see in the cards? There is nothing about the details of the artwork in the book. I'd like to have this DIY booklet as a reference in case I forget all the possible symbolism or the, all the possible meanings for the butterfly, for instance, right? I just like to have this um, explanation of the card, really. So I think I'll also write down spell suggestions or ideas or visualizations, uh, you know, what astral places I can visit when a particular card comes up, because I feel like that is actually the idea for this deck, the intention for this deck, to do more to, even if it's these um, cards that, you know, we can contemplate on, just the, the artwork and the energy and the word on there, the topical card this is. But then I'm not saying that these spell sections cannot be considered spells. They can, but... Yeah, again, I think I just really want to use this deck in my practice, and this is how I'm going to achieve that. So I'm actually really excited about that. Um, now, of course, I already wrote this down everywhere, uh, the simple, not-so-simple question of what does this mean as an affirmation? Uh, you know, where is this energy already manifesting, basically, and what does this mean in advice? How do you get to this energy? That's really just my style. I always like to make that distinction so that it's not just affirmation, and so I stop myself from only giving myself advice how to get somewhere, that it's really a nice balance, and I can just figure it out for myself at that very moment. So... That's it for now, I think. I hope you enjoyed. I know this was a lot of information. I'm terribly sorry it took so long. Please let me know if you've made it this far. Um, I really like this game. If you've made it this far, please comment frog or lucky frog, whatever you feel. I feel this is a lucky frog. I thrifted it. <laughs> so... Thank you all so much for being here and, yeah, again, making it this far. If there are any questions or, as I said, any other little mistakes that you know um, that you have found in this booklet or in the cards, let me know. Make everyone else aware of it so that we can fix it and use this beauty the way that it was intended. Okay, so I will see you all in the next one. Mm -hmm.